everyone, it's me, Krista. Welcome back to my channel. If you've been here before, if not, welcome for the very first time to Middle Earth Corner here on YouTube. Today we're going to be unboxing the November Premium Sketchbox. As always, we have our little insert that lets us know exactly what's inside. It looks like this month we have a bunch of illustration markers. We also have a cute marker-shaped sketchbox sticker this month. We also have our insert that shows us an example of what can be done with this month's box. I actually really like this one. It is by Tara DeHart, a Seattle-based designer, illustrator, and caricature artist. She started drawing caricatures professionally at Disney World in 2010 and continues to moonlight as a caricature artist in the Seattle area. She graduated from Portland State University with her bachelor's in graphic design, and her editorial illustrations have been featured in the Willamette Week, the Seattle Stranger, the Portland Vanguard, and Outbound Herbivore magazine. She has a passion for tattoos, her lovely pet rats, and biking around the city, causing mayhem. The first actual piece of art supplies I'm going to be talking about is the layout pad of paper that we got. It is by Han Mule. It's a layout pad. It is 4 by 9 inches, and there are 30 sheets. A custom design pad for this month's box. This paper is great for all types of markers. Its flat, smooth texture helps to create smooth transitions and prevent bleed through. When layering markers, retail price is normally $15. We got quite a few markers this month. The first kind is by Mona Me. They are color twin brush markers, and we got blue, green, and gray. These double-ended brush pens are easy to control and are great for hand lettering, illustration, and coloring. These markers blend easily with water as they utilize a water-based dye ink. The retail price for this is normally $5.50 each. The colors are really soft. They're definitely ones I don't have already, which is kind of nice. I do like how they are both brush tip markers, and one's a thicker version and one is a thinner version. They also seem to mix with each other pretty well. The next item we have is Kurosaki Zig Menso Brush Pen in Sepia. A light, fast, water-based pigment ink, this brush pen is great for illustration. Try using this pen in combination with the walnut ink from July's box. Retail price for this is normally $11.80. Like a lot of these little ink brush pens from Kuratake, you do need to untwist the top and remove that little yellow band that they have. That stops the ink from flowing out while it's just still in shipment and in stores and whatnot. After removing that band and putting the tip back on, you want to squeeze it a little bit and let gravity, let all that brown ink move towards the tip. It is a pretty brown. It is definitely more of a reddish based brown. I like how the tip is because you can get a variety of line weights with it. Here we have a tan marker. This is a Tombow ABT Pro marker. It's a dual brush pen in sand. This alcohol-based dual tip marker is great for lettering and illustration. These are especially great for graphic marks. The retail price for this is normally $5.99. I've used these before and I definitely like them. I prefer them to Tombow's water-based markers, for sure. The next marker we have is a Faber-Castell Pit Artist Brush Pen. This Pink Matter Lake brush pen features a thick barrel, which helps fight against hand fatigue and offers more alcohol-based ink in the barrel. The retail price for this is normally $6.00. Another alcohol-based marker we have is a Copic Sketch Marker in E11, which is Barley Beige. In industry standard, this professional-grade art supply is alcohol-based, dries quickly, and is great for building values. Retail price for this is normally $7.99. I do like Copic Sketch Markers. I like the fact that you can buy ink refills. I think that they apply very nicely, and they blend with each other very well. Speaking of blending, the final piece of art supplies we got is a Spectra Blender Pen. An alcohol-based blender that helps to smooth out color transitions and gradients. The retail price for this is normally $6.55. I do experiment with the blender a little bit right here. First I apply the Copic marker, and then I apply one of the Mona Mia ones right over it and use the blender to try to blend it out. It does blend it, but it also seems to leave this white cast on it and lighten them up quite a bit. I'm not sure how I feel about it. Here I'm trying to see if I can use it to help transition from the marker to the white of the paper. I'll have to play around with this a little bit more to figure out if I actually like it and how it works. I also play around with blending the other markers into each other. I did notice that that pink Faber-Castell marker did not seem to blend as easily with the other ones. It could just be because that one is so much more pigmented, it's such a stronger color than the other one, so it might be more difficult to blend those together. Other than that one though, most of them seem to blend pretty well. 
I'll have to see on a project how well they actually work out together. I do like the colors we got in this month's box. I think they all work really, really well together, and I think it's a nice palette. And for the rest of this video, I'm just going to leave you with the swatches that I'm attempting to blend out and mix the colors here. If you liked this video, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, questions, feelings, concerns, or you want to let me know how you felt about the items in this month's box, let me know all about that in the comment section down below. If you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe. I do Sketchbox unboxings and projects once a month. As always, thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy day or night to watch this video and listen to me ramble. I greatly appreciate it. I look forward to hearing from you guys soon, and you will definitely be hearing from me soon. Bye, everybody!